everyone. Welcome to the second video of subtopic 6.2 Equilibrium Constant. In the previous video, I have shown you how to write the equilibrium expression in terms of Kc and also Kp. Now, I want to show you the relation between Kp and Kc expression. For your information, in most cases, the Kc value is not equal to the Kp value of the same reaction. But when we want to combine both Kc and Kp expression in a single equation, where we know that the Kc is written as the concentration of each product species rise to the power of its mole coefficient, divide with the concentration of each reactant species to the power of its mole coefficient, while Kp is the partial pressure of each product species to the power of its mole coefficient, divide with the partial pressure of each reactant species to the power of its mole coefficient. So when we combine these two equations together, we will get a new formula or a new equation where Kp is equal to Kc times Rp to the power of delta N. So delta N here is the total mole coefficient of gases product minus total mole coefficient of gases reactant. So in this case, the total mole coefficient of product species is C plus B, while the total mole coefficient of reactant species is A plus B. So where we get C plus B minus A plus B. So in this table class, I want to show you the importance of how equilibrium constant is really dependent on how the chemical equation is written and balanced. For example, here in this case, we have the reaction of A plus B react to produce C and B in a reversible reaction. So the equilibrium constant is written as K. So the first case is, for example, here we have the new chemical equation where the original equation is multiplied by a new factor which is N. Okay, so the new equilibrium constant value is K rise to the power of the factor which is N. Okay, the second case is the new equation here is actually, is actually the reverse of the original equation. So we get C plus B react to produce A plus B. So when we reverse the reaction, the new equilibrium constant is written or is calculated as 1 over K. So the third case is this new equation is actually the reverse from the original equation here. And it's time or multiplied by a new, by a new factor which is M. So how do we calculate the new equilibrium constant? So the new K is calculated as 1 over k times to the power of the new uh, factor, which is m. So to further understand, let's take a look at this example together and don't forget to write also in your lecture notes. So the value of kc and kp is depend on how the equilibrium equation is written and balanced. For example, here class, we have this general equation, uh, N2O4 gas, this dissociates to produce 2 and O2 gas. So, the Kc expression for this original equation is given as Kc equals to concentration of NO2 power of 2 divided with the concentration of N2O4. And given the Kc value is 4.63 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So, what happened class if we have this new equation? So, by comparing to the original equation, we can see that this equation is actually the reverse from the original equation. So, the Kc for the reverse equation will be concentration of N2O4 divided with the concentration of NO2 to the power of 2. So, we have the new Kc value as 216. So, how do we calculate this? So, actually, so the K, the new Kc is actually the reverse of the first k which is 1 over k so when we 1 divide with the k 4.63 times 10 to the power of negative 3 so we will get 216 okay the third situation is where we have 1 over 2 and 2 over gas 
be composed to form one mole of NO2 gas. So here we can say that if we compare to the original equation here, so this equation is multiplied by, by a new factor which is 1 over 2. So the KC expression for the new equation will be concentration of NO2 divided with the concentration of N2O4 times to the power of 1 over 2. So the new KC value will be the K rise to the power of the new factor which is half. So we have we have 4.63 exponent 10 to the power of negative 3 to the power of 1 over 2. So that's why you get the new answer which is 0 0.0680. So now, let's take a look at the new terms, which is degree of dissociation with the symbol of alpha. So what is a dissociation reaction? A dissociation reaction is how a big molecule or a large molecule, complex molecule, is broken down into smaller molecules or broken down into smaller atoms or ion. For example, here we have PCL5 gas is dissoci dissociates to produce one mole of PCL3 gas plus chlorine gas. Or here we have N2O4 gas dissociates to form two mole of NO2 gas. Or we have ammonium chloride NH4Cl dissociates into ammonia gas and HCl gas. So the fraction or the percentage of the molecules that dissociate is called the degree of dissociation alpha. So when complete dissociation occur, so the value of alpha is 1 or 100% dissociation occur. However, if incomplete dissociation occurs, then the alpha is calculated as the changes in concentration of initial concentration times 100. Okay, and you have to know that the value of equilibrium constant, Kc and also Kp, do not change even if the percentage dissociation alpha increases. Now, let's take a look at the new terms, which is a reaction quotient. So, what is a reaction quotient Q? So, it is a measure to figure out which reaction a reaction is likely to proceed. So, the value can be compared to the equilibrium constant in order to determine the direction of the reaction that is taking place. It has the same form as equilibrium constant Kc and Kp. So, the reaction quotient for a general equation as below is given as follow. So, class, for example, we have this general equation. We have A gas plus react with B gas to produce C gas plus D gas. So, this is a reversible reaction annotate by this uh, reversible arrow. So when we want to write the QC expression, it has the same form as when we want to write the KC and KP expression. So QC is given as the concentration of each product species rise to the power of this mole coefficient divide with the concentration of uh, reactant species rise to the power of this mole coefficient. So QP is given as the partial pressure of each gaseous product times the power of this mole coefficient divide with the partial pressure of each gaseous reactant rise to the power of its mole coefficient. And the most important thing that you have to know is that the concentration or the partial pressure when we want to calculate QC and QP is not necessarily the equilibrium quantities. So what I mean is that, so the concentration here or the partial pressure here is or can be any value at any given time. For example, it can be initial concentration or it can be initial pressure. Okay, so by comparing the value with K, it is possible to decide the direction of the system in order to achieve equilibrium. For example, here we have three cases. Okay, the first case is when we calculate Q and we figure out that the Q has larger value compared to K. So what does it mean? So it means that at this time, the ratio of initial concentration of product to reactant is too large. That means you have more product than the reactant. 
So in order to reach equilibrium, the product must be converted to reactant. So as a result, the system proceed or must be shift from the right from right to left. The second case is when we calculate the Q and we figure out that the Q has the same value as, as K. So what does it mean? It means that the initial concentration now are equilibrium concentration. And at this time, the system is already at equilibrium. The third case is when we calculate, we figure out that the Q is smaller than K. So what does it mean? It means that the ratio, at this time, the ratio of initial concentration of product to reactant is too small. Okay? It means you have more reactant than the product. So to reach equilibrium, the reactant must be converted to product. As a result, the system must proceed or must shift from left to right to produce more uh, products. Okay, so in the next video, we will continue with the last subtopic which is 6.3 Leishatelius principle.